Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales of Space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Words of Power, written by Aranya P. Words hold power. A combination of words naturally holds even greater power. But the right combination of words and a strong enough will, one could weave the very fabric of reality to their will. This is especially true to the magically sensitive elves of the eternal kingdom of Aborea. When Alvin Mage weaves words together into power that could shape the world around them, they'd call it an incantation. A casting of spells, but like any rules regarding power, you need to have power to spend power. And this was a problem for them. For elves themselves naturally spend all of the self-generated powers and keeping them forever young. Their skins flawless and their moves ever so graceful. It was a blessing and a curse at the same time. For the powers that came from the earth, the wind and the trees were simply not enough to supply their demands. Unlike humans. Humans, on the other hand, have no natural ways to spend their self-generated power, so they keep building it up until the moment they die and expel their generated powers back into the world once more. From ashes to ashes, dust to dust, as they would say. Such a waste. Such a waste. This is where High General Elithareth Lan Elithor comes in, leading the first undefeated legion of eternal light for what will be their tenth and grandest reaping event. An event of the highest honor where warriors and mages of the kingdom would go through the portal created and held open by the royal magi and release any and all humans they could find of their short, pitiful existence and collecting the liberated powers to be put into the grand nexus within the grand city so that it may forever keep the power flowing. There were voices of concerns, rumors that the powers are actually souls of humans, and this is no better than necromancy. But everyone needed the power for their daily lives, so what must be done will be done. Our High General Elatharis Lan Elathor wasn't always a High General, though he was the son of one. He started his first reaping as a simple captain of the shield mages, whose job was to keep the legion protected from any and every unexpected problem. It was seen as a rather lowly position, where most of the time was spent shielding the legion from the rain and dust from wherever the portal sends them. The humans had never fought back effectively, not against the likes of the great vanguards, anyway. It was always... Slaughter. Until it wasn't. A few reapings ago, the humans started fighting back. Elatharith could remember it like it was yesterday. It started small. The humans hadn't run away so much that time, and in their rough, vaulty hands were ugly imitations of an elven bow. It started as rocks, then there was crude arrows and spears that were flung at the advancing legion. It was useless, of course. None of their primitive weapons could pierce the great shield, held by a full battalion of shield mages, and the slaughter continued to power the kingdom. The reaping after that changed everything. When the legion came looking for an easy harvest, the humans turned. They were no longer the harmless, beautiful field of wheat waiting to be reaped. They were warriors. Warriors, who was meant in the loosest sense of the word. Some were clad in crude armor, others had nothing but their wooden clothes, armed with weapons forged from metal, dug from the ground and smelted in rudimentary fire. Their attempts to fight back were still pitiful. Their columns were just a joke, and their infantry died in droves, and their cavalry burned as they charged through bolts of lightning, fire, death, and various other things that meant them harm. But even as their pitiful attempt to fight back was, they changed the reaping forever. 
No longer do owls go in expecting fields to reap, but now they expect an army to crush. It was easier that way. You don't need to march so far looking for enough humans to kill and collect their power when there's literally an army right in front of you for the picking. Not to mention how much more honorable and exciting one could make it sound. Turns out stories of battles are quite popular with the ladies. This boosted the number of elves who wished to be amongst the participants in the next reaping considerably, which wasn't a surprise. What was a surprise, however, was when the next reaping came and the first legion marched against the human army once more. They found that humans do indeed have magic. Using an excuse of an imitation of one of their battle staves, the humans yelled their words like as savages they are. Short, simple, and barely any effect. Fire! They shouted, and their staves erupted with power, invisible force smashing against the shield again and again. But it held. Fire! They shouted their word of power, and a series of what could only be called as large, wheeled metal battle staves erupted with their terrible power, sending in perfect spheres of stone and metal through the air and smashing into the shields. But it was still no match for the shield company, whose power bounced away all harm, allowing the Legion to march up close enough to unleash the real power upon the ranks of the humans, resulting in a bountiful harvest. Although it was the first reaping that the Legion lost some elves, it was only a few, mind, less than a dozen, and their bodies were carried back home like heroes with full military honor, and they grieved for weeks in honor of fallen comrades. It had been some time since that battle. General Elatharis Lion Elathor pulled himself back out from his daydreaming of the upcoming glory of battle. Mounted upon his demigraph, he could see the human army just up ahead, on top of a long length of a hill, far less numerous than what had faced before and hunkered down in the dirty halls. High grounds mattered little, for he was sure the victory is certain. He ordered his army to form up and prepare for battle, and now famous shield company strengthened their shields. Then the hills lit up. Terrible, earth-shaking thunders roared from the hill as the human mages unleashed their deadly sorcery. Great, thick bolts of power streaking through the air and smashed into the matrixes of wards and shields to the shock of every elf present. The shields that have never failed them, never faltered, then shattered and the awesome power of human sorcery. Thinking quickly, the High General barked out his orders using his magically enhanced voice that thundered over the battlefield. Shield walls were formed as the vanguard began their unstoppable advance towards the human's defensive position. The hill lit up once more. Countless cracks were heard through the air as bolts of raw power were unleashed upon the hapless legion below like a horizontal rain. Then, long arrows of magic that pierced the vanguard shields, which were sung from green glass that have turned away even the mightiest sword blows and have deflected any spells and weapons used by humans before. The ranks of the vanguard soldiers were slaughtered in a similar fashion to how they slaughtered humans. Illaroth Lan Illithal did not feel like a high general when he uttered his incantations of a personal shield spell. The spell, perfected over hundreds of years, was a powerful one, and affects humans' impossibly fast magical arrows. He tried to rally his troops, but he found that his voice was overshadowed by human's magic. He had to shout at the demigraph knights to follow him towards a glorious charge. It was the only way to restore the morale of his army as they were cut down like grass. These knights formed a formation behind him, preparing for a charge. However, the charge never got off, as the very earth around them erupted, throwing elves high into the air. 
more often than not, in pieces. High General Elitharis, Lan Elithor, knew at that moment that the battlefield was no longer theirs, his army lying broken and bleeding on the ground. Those who died were the fortunate ones. Everything was wrong. He was supposed to win. The High General couldn't do anything. No orders came to mind, not ones that would help the situation. He was waiting for himself to wake up from this nightmare back at the capital, a day before the reaping. Yes, he must have had one nectar too many. This couldn't possibly happen. It couldn't be real. Relief flooded through his body, and Elitharis began to laugh. His demographs head cocked slightly at him, waiting for its master's command. Then, without warning, its skull burst into a fine mist of several shades of red and pink. Elitharis' shields shattered from an unbelievably strong invisible force that tore through all of his defensive matrixes. And the magical force continued until it ripped his left arm right out of its socket, throwing him off of his now headless demigriff. Pain jolted him awake and he meekly mumbled words of healing to stop the bleeding before exhaustion took a hold of him once more. Perhaps this time, he'll wake up from this horrible nightmare. Elitharis woke back up, but his back was aching. He was not laying on his comfortable bed back in the Grand City, but still in the same patch of dirt and grass where everything went wrong. He couldn't feel his left arm, and he wasn't sure if his legs still worked. Everything hurt, and he could barely utter any words at all. His eyes worked frantically, looking for any sign of salvation, only to spot a figure walking towards him. And it wasn't an elf. The High General struggled to prop himself up with one arm, wheezing and gasping for air, as a human mage approached him and drew his battle wand, an ugly, unrefined, strange-looking wand made from some wood Elitharis couldn't recognize. Elitharis' eyes crossed as he looked at the wand, led up to the human, and Elitharis land Elithor, High General of the First Undefeated Legion of the Eternal Light, felt fear. Wait, stop. I have gold. I have woman. I'll give you anything. Just please don't kill me. Please. Elitharis tried, pleading for his life through choked breaths as he tried to push himself away. The human mage didn't even hesitate as he uttered his own words of power. The United States of America does not negotiate with terrorists. The last thing, Elitharis, Lan, Elithor, High General of the First Undefeated Legion of the Eternal Light, saw was the human's battle wand discharging its full power right between his eyes. But that light, whatever worries or fear he had, was finally left behind him, smeared all over the ground. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I would just quickly like to give thanks to our tier 5 members. Elithia, Barky, Pudicule, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gusta, Savage Patch Papa, and Lord Azrakal.